Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Marmoset, and our objective today is to go to TMA-2, which is up here. Um, and then here. So I'll bring you back when I'm an awful lot closer to them. Yeah, that's pretty much it. This is going to be quite a short introduction. I'll see you guys later. And welcome back. Um, we're now quite close. Uh, I am going to throttle quite a bit down. And then I'm just going to point the plane at it, pretty much. Oh, this looks like from what I can see just on here. You can see it probably on the screen. That's three points. So I don't know if there is actually still a monolith there or not, but that looks like something very different to what we've seen previously. So we are quite a bit above the ground. Let's bring ourselves around. You are a bit of a pain in the ass to fly. Um, while we're plummeting, I'll point out we've got extra wings on the end. That enabled me to fly an altitude of 10,000 kilometers, um, which meant that this whole flight thing was an awful lot easier. Let's full on probably kill the engines. The thing that I've done is I've tweaked the angle. I've uh, put a essentially trim on this. Oop, that's too fast. I just saw these go red. That means I can't parachute. Um, let's completely try and kill our horizontal speed. Pop the parachutes to give us a hand. See the wings bending. So those apparently aren't connected. I might need a strut. But yes, that's right. I've tweaked the angle on these um, so that apparently we had a very slight nose down moment. Uh, we're always, I was endlessly having to correct our pitch. Well, that's nice. We're pretty much directly above it. Uh, yeah, I was endlessly having to correct our pitch while I was trying to time warp and all the other bits of it. And I thought, well, I've had enough of that. I can't be bothered. So I decided that uh, I would tweak. I would trim. I would tilt these down a little bit at the front. Um, such that I wouldn't have to worry about that. Let's put the gear down. That and brakes so are rolling. Yep, that's everything sorted. And there's time warp. Get ourselves down on the ground. I don't think we've got any science. This is grasslands. Liking how well this plane is performing so well. It's uh, a shame we can't necessarily get a bit more clearance so that we could flush these with the main body. But overall, I'm pretty happy. Um, I think what I will probably do between episodes or between the next flight is I will tweak this so it's mounted onto this wing rather than onto the nacelle so that doesn't bend off quite so much. And ground. Righty the ho then. Let's turn the brake off. Give ourselves a very small amount of throttle and we'll drive over. So this very much, let's have a look. Discovered an abandoned space center. Yes, we have. Um, so that looks like a VAB. That looks like a launch site. And that looks like a com dish. Is it turning? Yeah, the com dish is turning. That is interesting. And there is our anomaly amongst the midst of it. So let's get nice and close. Um, break. Alright, that is really close. Uh, park. And since we want our Kerbal to be able to get back in again, um, let's do what we've done previously. And tuck our legs in like a pigeon um, before... Well... Mauler went and got the last one. So come over here a sec. And we'll do a crew and we will transfer crew Aston to here. Aston, if you'd be so kind as to get out. Let go. Actually, while you're here, can you reach this? Repack parachute. Excellent. So, in a sec, we'll be back to repack those. We'll make sure that's all nice and tidy. Because if we've repacked the parachutes, we can then just fly on. Because um, we're... Looks like an abandoned launch facility, says Gene. Where are the other Kerbals who made it... Were? Were there are other Kerbals who made it into space before us? I don't know, Gene. I simply don't know. But in the interim, now that we've got that mission complete, I'm going to go and repack parachutes because that means we are an awful lot closer to the pyramid from here than the pyramid is to the Kerbal Space Center so if we 
can repack our parachutes. Oh, let me just a sec. Yeah. Uh, transfer crew, transfer, transfer, EDA. There we go. And let go. We might as well get everyone out. Um, deserve a chance to stretch their legs. Nope, doesn't need changing. Let's just check if the thermometer's on the front of anything to report. I think I did grab something like that. Yeah, take data. Log pressure. Alright, reset. Alright. A chance to stretch your legs. Grab. Get back in. And then... There it is. Transfer crew. Get in the rear section. And then we will tab back over to our NG. And they. Oh, can you climb up on there? You can. That'd save you a bit of time. Walk across the back of the thing. And repack that parachute. Good! So we've got a fair amount of fuel, I'm pretty sure. Yep, I know we're basically bouncing the thing off the back of Mauler's head right now. But, oh, get up, there's a bit of a fall. Grab. Board. Transfer crew. Aston, get in the back. And then Mauler. Use the guys to get back in the cockpit. Grab. Board. And we're away. Alright, we're repacked. We've got quite a bit of fuel. Let's turn the lights off. The landing gear up and the brakes off. Doink. Alright. So let's turn the brakes back on. Uh, we're not pointed at anything dangerous. And we will quickly pop back to the space center. I wonder if we got any new contracts. Ooh. Yes, apparently discovering that means there are now places to investigate on the moon. We managed to track the signals of any curving bombers. They appear to be heading for several directions on the moon, one on Minmus. Alright, well, we've not got the Minmus one yet. So that tracking station, that old train, must have been pointing at something. But in the interim, let's pick up, investigate the strange. From all what we see is some extreme in the western desert. Looks like those pyramids in the area of the desert have assets from the ground. Kerbin Aeronautical Society would love us if we could land there and take a look. Alright, we will, we, will, we will do that. And then we will go back to the tracking station. And as you can see, there's the pyramids, and there's our plane. Landed at uh, Baikern Baunor. An awful lot closer that distance than that distance. So that'll save me a fair bit of time. I would like to fly the LR2. Alright, so waypoints, track the pyramids. Heading to pyramids is 196. Oop, don't want planet shine. Alright, off. Give me a little bit of thrust. And that direction looks like it might be flat enough. Full power. And we're airborne off a ramp. Alright, gear up. I remembered this time. It took me a while in the previous couple of attempts. And there's our pyramids. So we'll gain some altitude so that we can definitely fly over. Stop pitching up quite so much. Is your centre of mass moving as you're losing fuel? There we go. A bit more stable now you're out of time. And we'll just do a gentle turn. And then wondering about pumping fuel around. Looks like I can't do that. <laughs> Pin. Pin. 
guess I can turn fuel flow off. Alright, so our time... Ooh, let's get you flattened out a little bit. We don't need to be going so high. We don't have quite so far to go, but we are now supersonic. And with that, I will bring you back when we're closer to the pyramids. Just a minute and a half or so now. I'm getting close to the pyramids. These EVA reports from the Germans, this guy. Oh, that's useful. Space high is 250. Flying high 18 kilometers. Yeah, alright, fair enough. Um, I don't think I'll worry about that. <laughs> Let's get the landing stuck, shall we? Pretty sure we're not going to have the fuel to make it to TMO3. That might be a separate flight. But we are making good progress on getting over here. Let's adjust our heading a little bit more. And there's our pyramids. It's us uh, throttle back a lot. And we will start heading down, make our descent. Which feels kind of weird to point a plane at the ground. I'm just pleased we are able to use this one for more than one mission. That's really excellent. Ooh, balance out. Around. Kill the engines. And I'm going to manually deploy these because I don't know. Apparently, I can't deploy you. I need to come down on three then. Let's kill our horizontal speed, shall we? Now we're pretty much. Oh, they are pretty pyramids, aren't they? I'm pretty sure I repacked you. Nope, staging not doing anything. Don't quite know why you're not working. I think we're going to be slow enough. Um, but we should probably endeavour to be over there. Yep, yeah, it's not becoming slow enough, but very much nose heavy. So, let's put a little bit of engines on. And drop the gear. So we might be having to do a bit of a roll around there. Yep, the engines are not helping me pull up. Alright, let's just spend the uh, seven or so minutes we've got until we hit the ground. Nose first. But a bit faster than I would really like. Turn the SAS off. How do we naturally rest? Yeah, nose first. Bang! That was a bit unpleasant, but we're down, and the brakes are on, and there we are. All right, turn the brakes off, and roll towards those pyramids. Don't mind if we break the plane a little bit now, because we're not going to be using it again after this one. Discovered the Desert Pyramids of Kerbin! If you wouldn't mind slowing down a bit. Thank you. And now carry on. Are we going uphill or are we still going vaguely down? Still going vaguely downhill. Alright. If we need it, we can always just give the engine the burst. But just under 10 meters a second will do nicely. 
It's going to like a rocket engine. If I do that, it does take quite a while for them to speed up. But it does give me an extra boost of speed. Woo, let's turn the uh, SAS on. And put a bit more brake on. A bit more brake. Right, we don't have parachutes, so if we do decide to go off the edge of this speed, there's not a lot we can do about it. We'll be at my mercy to see whether or not I can actually land this plane like a normal plane, rather than just bumping parachutes. I think it's 7.6 G-force apparently. I'm assuming that was probably when we landed. Give it a bit of throttle to get over this bump. And there we go. Put the brakes on permanently. So we should be able to manage Oh, I just realized there's little red lights on the uh, landing legs. Oh, there goes a bit of wing. Definitely not taking off again. It's fine. All good. It's all fine. We didn't need that bit of the plane anyway. And pull around. Well, these are interesting pyramids, aren't they? Use the last little bit of speed we've got. Okay, so that's the anomaly we're heading for. Do a little power slide at the end because it's more like that uh, statue of a Kerbin with a wizard's hat. All right, lower the gear, tuck ourselves in, and Mauler, if you'd be so kind as to get out of the way so that transfer crew sea file transfer that sea file once he's got himself up off the ground can go and have a look being as he's a scientist and everyone else has had a chance to look at the other ones this strange strange statue what <laughs> on earth Statue of an ancient Kerbal, half sunk into the stands. Amazing, you found an antique Kerbal civilization. Can you see anything else? There's an inscription on the statue. Is there? If there is, I don't see it. <laughs> Alright. Let's get back aboard, shall we? Well, just before we do... No, it, I'm pretty sure that... Yeah, that's just weird. No, that's just pretty weird. Let's get back to the ship, shall we? So that recovering you guys is slightly easier. And then, we'll be off to TMA3. And we'll see what's all the way over there. Be yet another adventure. We'll see what we can find. Walk, 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 walk. All right. Board. Transfer. You to here. Skip to you. Climb. Get back aboard and recover. Yes. Yeah, I probably should have checked something before I did that. Got most of our parts back. Aston got a EVA rib uh, ribbon for actually taking some steps. Alright, so yeah, available. There we want, TMA3. And I will bring you back when we're an awful lot closer. So we've flown into the night, um, which means it's dark. Um, I have turned the, the lights on up here. It's not helping too much. Um, and it looks like this anomaly is quite high up in some mountains. We're currently flying at 0.93 Mach at 8,500 feet and slowly climbing. I just wanted to make sure I was going to get over those mountains um, because earlier when I was approaching land back way over there-ish, um, it looked like our... Ooh, that is kind of pretty, isn't it? 
I have no idea what button it is to hide the HUD. Settings. Nope. Nope. Fine. Um, but it is a pretty shot. Of the Milky Way. Yeah, I'm going to call it the Milky Way. I'm pretty sure the Kerbals are in the same galaxy as us. So yeah, apologies if it's a little bit dark on screen and all you can really see is the HUD. Um, just know that we're a minute and a half or so away and I'm adjusting my heading. This, unlike TMA 2 and the pyramids, looks like it's not going to be on a nice flattish area. This looks more like TMA 4, which was stuck in a little bit of depression at high altitude. So annoying, I can't actually... I know where it is, but I don't know how high it is. I mean, it looks... I mean, please don't be on the top of the mountain. That would just be annoying. I think we will probably, that being the case, do a flyby of the location to get an understanding of where it is. Because if it's on the top of the mountain, that might be a real pain in the ass to get to. Now, as long as we can land with our engines intact and our wheels on, and, you know, obviously with the crew cabin in one piece, then we can notionally motor up the side of these things. We have thrust-to-weight ratio. Two huge, great big engines. Um, I just really don't want to have to. Wow, that's high. We're at, what, six and a bit thousand feet? And I'm pretty sure we're at the same altitude. Yeah, it's on the mountaintop. Balls. Alright then. That looks like it might be a slightly nicer approach. Let's throttle down, bank, and turn. It's a nice turn angle I've got there. You notice that this is not dropping at all. I'm losing a little bit of speed. That turned out to be a very nice turn. Alright. Just a throttle a bit more. Angle. Angle. See, as soon as I pop the parachutes, they're going to fully deploy. And I do mean fully deploy. Gear, brake. Engine off, parachutes. And we'll see how close we get. It looks like the top of this mountain is potentially flatter than it could be. But I am turning us around as best I can. And the vague hopes and brakes are already on. See our lights now. Getting ever so close. So this actually turns out to be 31 degree slope we're about to hit. Alright, that's the direction we want to be going in. And I'm actually going to throttle up now. Oh, that's going to be a tricky one. Alright, so we're held. And yes, the brakes are on. We do notionally have an upward speed. It's measured in millimeters per second. Yeah, I know the brakes are on. Brakes are now off. Alright, let's throttle down for quite a bit. We need to come to a halt again. I'll just have the brakes on. Bring the engines up to two thirds. Wait until we're up to thrust. Wait until that number stops going and then release the brakes. Tab the brakes again. Bring us to a halt. Kill the engine. 
Yep, yeah, alright. That'll do. 80 meters away. That will do. Alright. In that case, let us tuck in the legs. Confirm we are non moving. Confirm speed is in millimeters per second. We're not going anywhere anytime soon. Alright. Let's see what this one has to say. Discovered a strange monolith in Kerbin. Yeah, it's over there in the sky. So I'm hoping that whoever put the anomaly package together was sensible enough to include um, <laughs> the area effect of it. Sorry. Hopefully they'll account for the fact it's off the ground and we can't get very close. Really cold up here, even the EVA suit. Can I go home now? Move them into space. We need to triangulate as many more than this as possible. Nice. Alright, let's get back aboard, shall we? No, it's not L for lights. Keep your lights on, because it is quite dark. So yeah, that's, that's flying in the sky. You can see the black outline of it against the... Uh, there you go. Let's get back on the plane where it's warmer. We're not going to be able to take off from here. We're going to have to wait for recovery. I don't quite know what that means, given that there doesn't seem to be anyone else living on Kerbin. But let's get back aboard the plane, where it is at least warm. Grab. And board. And recover. Alright, so that's all the TMAs, the Tycho Magnetic Anomalies, that are on Kerbin looked at. Covered a fair bit of the plane. Crew's all good. So, as did Kermin. Land over 4,000 with a G Force of 5G award, another G Force award, and a 4,000 landing. So, Maul has obviously landed somewhere quite high at some point in the past. So, our next set of TMAs are on the moon. Interesting. And we'll have to see what happens then. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I have been the Marmoset. That has been the Tycho Magnetic Anomalies on Kerbin's surface via the Explorer LR-2 craft. Quite pleased with that plane. Please remember to like, comment, and or subscribe.